Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Entered service back in 2005, the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor is still one of the most advanced aircraft in the world. Designed as an advanced tactical fighter, the Raptor boasts versatile armaments, high-speed capabilities, and a service ceiling of up to 65,000 feet. The F-22 was also one of the first fighters to feature built-in stealth technology. The heart of the aircraft, however, is its engine design. The F-22 is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 turbofans, which can put out up to 35,000 pounds of thrust. The nozzles of the engines are specially designed to reduce infrared emissions and make the plane less vulnerable to heat-seeking missile attacks. As with any other aircraft component, these engines must be carefully maintained at all times. When it comes to repairs and testing, the Air Force turns to special facilities known as hush houses. True to their name, hush houses are enclosed noise suppression facilities used for testing vital aircraft systems, most notably engines. Here, Jet engines can be tested while still in the aircraft or after they've been removed. In fact, the entire air intake and exhaust systems of these facilities have been specially designed to optimize engine airflow while simultaneously minimizing noise. Engine exhaust tests are generally done across a special containment unit known as an exhaust detuner. Essentially a giant muffler, these devices vent and dampen the exhausted gases using a large flow of cooling air. This, combined with braces placed at the back of the craft, ensure engines can be tuned and repaired without the plane rocketing forward unexpectedly. What we have to do is put it through several different tests at several different power settings so that we can subject it to a similar environment it's going to experience in the air. It can happen here on the ground where it's much safer in a much more controlled environment where we can address those problems without subjecting a person to it while they're controlling an aircraft. There's more to maintaining an advanced military aircraft than checking the engine itself. Nearly every inch of the plane requires regular attention. Even the engine inlets need to be painted regularly with special corrosion-resistant coatings. Believe it or not, this was a very labor-intensive process, with maintenance personnel climbing inside the tight area and attempting to lay down several consistent coats of paint. Fortunately, it has since been largely outsourced to robots. That's not the case with other maintenance duties, however. Ground crews are frequently tasked with washing the plane inside and out. This includes cleaning interior weapon and landing gear compartments, taking great care all the while not damaging the various electrical components. These are removed and inspected separately to ensure they're in top working order. One of the F-22's primary weapons is its internally mounted M61A2 20mm rotary cannon. Typically referred to as a Gatling gun, this weapon must also be painstakingly maintained by special armament technicians to ensure proper function. The F-22 boasts some very impressive operational capabilities.
However, as a first strike aircraft, it is often tasked with operating from small and often remote landing strips. These situations are known as austere landings, and while they happen all the time, they can end up putting pilots and ground crews at significant risk. Recently, the U.S. Air Force has started implementing a system known as StarCraft. This experimental refueling system is designed to simplify the process by allowing for mid-runway refueling. A special fuel cart is hooked up to a fuel bladder, which can be positioned almost anywhere on the airfield. Since all the components are mobile, the pump can be set up virtually anywhere, allowing for full operation at even the most remote air bases. With the addition of a tow tractor, even the smallest airfield can be outfitted for maximum versatility. Regardless of how the F-22 gets its fuel, there's no doubting that a Raptor with a full tank of gas is something truly formidable. The plane can climb at an impressive 984 feet per second, giving it a huge advantage in the event of an emergency operation. This is largely due to the combined 70,000 pounds of thrust put out by the jet's engines. Once airborne, the F-22 is incredibly maneuverable. This is largely due to what is known as thrust vectoring technology. This is where the engines themselves move in conjunction with the ailerons and elevators to redirect the thrust as the aircraft turns. Even these small changes in thrust direction are sufficient to allow for increased direction control and superior maneuverability in the air. It's important to understand that this increased maneuverability comes at a very high price, particularly for pilots. Moving at such high speeds puts tremendous pressure on the human body, especially the brain and circulatory system. This pressure is known as G-force and it requires special training in order to prepare military personnel to handle it. Without this training, pilots could suffer G-induced loss of consciousness, tunnel vision, and what's known as gray out, or a loss of their ability to see color. To prevent these potentially serious conditions, the Air Force has developed a series of tests designed to subject these men and women to G-forces in a safe environment. This typically involves strapping the crew member into a special simulator while in their full flight suit. Then applying various G-force amounts so that their body can slowly adjust. One of the oldest and most recognizable G-force simulators is what's known as a centrifuge. This is essentially a circular chamber with a small cockpit placed at the end of a large rotating motor. As the motor moves, the cockpit is subjected to various levels of G-force. As it moves faster, those forces are increased. As it slows down, they are similarly decreased. Centrifuge trainers like this have been around for decades but were largely used to prepare astronauts for the rigors of space. 
Now that planes are moving and maneuvering at higher speeds than ever, militaries worldwide have had to embrace some of the same training techniques. And while pilots may find the centrifuge experience uncomfortable, it can help minimize the chances they'll experience a loss of consciousness in the air. Recently, the U.S. military has invested significant resources into understanding why these physiological events take place in the air. It's hoped that by better understanding how pilots' bodies react to G-forces and other stressors, they can develop techniques to combat them. Currently, extensive medical tests are being done on conditions like hypoxia, hypocapnia, and hypercapnia. These refer to oxygen deprivation, the lack of carbon dioxide in the blood, and elevated carbon dioxide levels, respectively. Still, the Air Force has not given up on the use of simulators. In fact, the development of virtual reality technology has helped reduce the size of some of these simulators down to just a laptop and a joystick. While it may not provide the movements seen in larger simulators, it is still a great introduction to the operation of modern military aircraft. Who knows, in the future, these planes may not need pilots at all. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.